Lesson 84 is the last one we're covering in this unit. And for this, we are going to Germany to look at international formatting. The thing to look over beforehand is 84E, metric units of measurement. But otherwise, we are going to be applying everything that we've learned in all of the other lessons in the report 8459, a business report. Now the first thing to notice is that we are not typing the letter 8482, but there was an enclosure notation. This report is an enclosure for that letter. What does that give you a clue about? As we open the blank document to get started and pull up our checklist, I hope you thought of the fact that we need to use A4 size paper setting for this report since it is an enclosure that would have been typed on A4 size paper. Now we once again press enter five times to begin the report two inches from the top of the page. Then we are going to center the title. Notice that the keyboard command for center is control E. I'm going to use that this time. It's always more efficient if you can to remember the keyboard commands because that keeps your hands in the ready to go position. We're also going to make the title 14 point font size and all caps. I forgot to set bold formatting, so I can demonstrate that you can always do that afterwards. Now here, my best practice recommendation is that you decrease the font size back to 12 before you press enter two times. That allows the space to be less than the 14 point font size from the title would take up on the page. Now we type a date. We can turn off bold at this point and press enter twice. We're going to begin typing the report with blocked paragraphs. So switch back to left alignment and begin your first paragraph. This report is also using proofreader marks. It's a rough draft. Now when you get to US circled, that means spell it out. Then we see a new paragraph mark. So press enter twice. At this point you have to turn the page in the textbook and you will type one more paragraph before we insert our first table in the report. Now we're going to go back to Dusseldorf and insert the umlaut. Now we're ready for our first table. Press enter two times because we need a blank line before the table. Let's scroll up here a little bit. Here over in the checklist you can see the common standard formatting expected in this table. First we can count the rows and columns and insert our table. I see three columns and seven rows. Merge the cells for the title block. Then turn on bold, center, caps lock, and I am going to increase my font size to 14 because this table has a two-line title rather than a title and subtitle. The clue is this. You see the three underlines under four volume, which means capitalize each letter in the words. Since that is all caps, that indicates that it should be treated as a two-line title. Press enter once, type four, volume, then you can turn caps lock off and I'm going to decrease to size 12 before I press enter for the blank line. In the column heading row, I'm going to select the entire row, press bold and center. All right, I'm going to pause while I fill in the rest of the information for this table. With all the information entered, we're now going to auto fit the table and center it horizontally. Select the entire table, then you can press center in the paragraph group on the home ribbon. Now we're ready to insert a blank line after the table. Type the next paragraph, press enter twice for a blank line, go back and insert the umlaut symbol in Dusseldorf, move to the insert ribbon symbol, and it's the first choice in mine. Yours may be in a different location. For this table, we're still on the insert tab and we can move to three columns and again seven rows. Merge the first row for the title. Set bold and center position. 
You can turn on caps lock and change the font size to 14. Once again, we have a two line title, so both lines will be 14 point. Then I reduce the font size before pressing enter for the blank line. Select the entire row for the column headings, click bold and center, and then fill in the rest of the information for the table. Okay, I counted one too many rows when I inserted my table, so I'm going to get rid of that. Then apply auto fit and center the table horizontally. There is no vertical centering since these tables are a part of another document or inserted in another document. Now we have to scroll up on our checklist. We have a list to insert next. So we have a paragraph and a list to type. As I pause to type some of this information, I want to note that the proofreader mark STET, where you see the dots under the word, is marked to delete, but the STET means to keep the original word after all. You'll see several of these in the remainder of the report. Okay, as you see this next paragraph typed here, we have flowed on to page two. After you type the end of this paragraph with a colon, press enter twice, then click the bulleted list command in the ribbon paragraph group. After the last item in the list, press enter once and then once again to end the list and once again for the blank line before you type the last paragraph. Since the web address comes at the end and you don't want to press enter at the end of the document, this is the time to remind you of the way to retain a hyperlink and still get rid of trailing spaces at the end of a document. So press space once to turn it into a hyperlink, then move your insertion point back to immediately after the period and before the space, and use the delete key. The backspace will not work for this. Now we have gotten rid of the space and retained the hyperlink for that URL. All right, one more thing we need to do. This is a multi-page document. It's going to need a page number. So we move to Insert, Page Number, Top of Page, and Plane Number 3 is the selection on the right. Remember to click Different First Page. Then we can close Header and Footer and review our document. This is ready to save and submit to GDP for scoring. Thank you.